Up next, Vicki Thomas's interview with Joe North, the author of Shine Books. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Vicky, and I'm a member of the Succeed with Dyslexia team. Uh, today, I'm joined by Joe North, who is the author of Shine Books, uh, a series of books which are helping to normalise a range of special educational needs conditions within society. Um, hi, Joe. Thanks for Hello. joining us today. <laughs> Can I just start off by asking you the inspiration behind creating Shine Books? Yeah, so um, traditionally, I'm a teacher. Um, so the inspiration for me for the book, so I um, primarily teach older children, so 16 plus, um, used to teach 11 to 16 as well. Um, and just for me, the kind of lack of understanding they had around really common conditions such as dyslexia or um, OCD, autism, um, like really astounded me. And just at, at that late stage, um, they're, they're just sort of lack of knowledge around it and that the, the students who did have the conditions kind of felt embarrassed by them. Um, I just it really kind of highlighted to me that if they're struggling, you know, with with understanding and, and, and dealing with it at that age, um, I felt that something really needed to be done at a much younger age just to kind of normalise the conditions from the get go to in include it, you know, in vocabulary for sort of five, six, seven year olds, um, just to get them talking about it. And then also for to allow children to actually have characters that they can relate to. Um, and to sort of, I just think there's such a, a gap in the market that we really don't represent these characters enough and, and have kind of enough awareness about removing the stigma for the, for the conditions. Yeah, that's brilliant. I suppose it's one of them where you kind of want children to realise early that and to normalise it so that when they do get to teenagers later on that it's, there's not stigma there and that they can feel open about themselves. Yeah, definitely. And, and so often you get... You know, obviously within a school, you'll, you'll have to adapt a lesson maybe for them or, you know, someone with dyslexia may need a different coloured paper or they may need um, longer time to, to do a certain assessment. So it's not that you want, you know, I don't want it to be hidden in the class, but if students aren't used to seeing these kind of things, then when the student with dyslexia is, is given the different tools to help them, it's kind of really everyone's staring at them and it's all, what are they doing? Why have they got that? Whereas... I think if we, like you said, we just remove that stigma um, and it's just part of their learning, then, you know, they're no better or worse than, than anyone else in the class, but they just might need to do things in a slightly different way. Yeah, exactly. It's really important, that is. Um, so one of your books specifically is called Dylan, A Dog with Dyslexia, which is, um, so around dyslexia there, is this just trying to, like we said, just create more of an understanding around that are you going through the different types of special educational needs yeah so it's really and, and what I don't want the books to ever be is, is a diagnosis because obviously symptoms can vary hugely um, they can be displayed in different ways um, the, the books for me certainly are, are purely just getting people talking so I've actually got um, a six and a three-year-old um, but kind of with my six-year-old I was you know I'd sort of sit down and, and read the books through with her and it just generated these really natural conversations where you know she'd just say oh what well, what does that mean or why can't they why can't they read that or, or you know why can't they write and it just starts those conversations so it's just there and, and it's just you know really naturally then chatted through um, and you don't get any of that kind of confusion around it and, and misunderstanding so um yeah it's just trying to to bring it in really early yeah and by broadening it like that as well they can understand where it comes into the community and where they could fit in or other people could yeah, rather than trying to say to them well it's this and it's that yeah, yeah. you can like yeah, and also with within all the books so obviously whilst you know they, they normally the characters will come with come up with some sort of challenge or something they find difficult like whether it's a tricky situation or just something has to be adapted um but then throughout all of the books it's it's about you know your your friends helping you through about seeing the the different strengths that they have so um my one on autism she's she's incredibly good with uh remembering dates and numbers so actually you know her friends love that she knows where all their birthdays are so it's it's also not about you know i don't want the condition to define them but it's also about understanding that condition is part of them and they shouldn't be embarrassed or you know or hidden from it it's just part of their makeup um so so yeah dylan kind of has a spelling test um he has he does have some extra time um he has different colored paper um and it's all just you know but then there's there's a sport element in it and dylan's actually very good at sport so we touch on you know his strengths and actually 
you know, as, as children and, and as adults, you have to play to, to your strengths and, and what you're good at. So it really, hopefully it highlights, you know, that there's so much else about a person other than the fact they may have dyslexia or OCD or ADHD or, or whatever it might be. Yeah, that's a brilliant message to get across. And it's definitely um, a message which is definitely gaining some traction, I think, worldwide of inclusivity, but also that people are unique and you've got to really push and go with what you are. If you're good at this, if you're good at that, you've just got to really go for it, be positive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, brilliant message. Um, so can see that you, you've mentioned your um, SEN experience. What did you bring from that into the creative process for creating your books? Um, so I think for me, it's obviously from a, from a teaching point of view, it's knowing the, the different strategies and tips and techniques that can be used for different conditions. So it's kind of putting my industry experience into the actual story and, and what the challenge might be that they're facing. Um, and then also kind of the, the personal insight I've had to it. So whether I've you know, dealt with a, a learner who's been very upset from how they felt or how they were treated or, you know, anything to do with their condition um, and kind of taking their feelings and, and the experiences that I've shared with them in the classroom and, you know, constructing that into a book to, to you know, show how it's not a negative and, and how it can be changed, but also addressing that there are points where they are going to feel vulnerable or they're going to feel upset or, or different. And again, it's, it's not ignoring the fact that those feelings exist because they do. Um, but it's about with each book showing that it doesn't matter that they exist. It's about how we, we get around it and, and deal with the situations as and when they come. Um, so, yeah, hopefully just my kind of year, many years of teaching is, is just the, that real insight that I've got. A lot of my stories are are very sort of loosely based on things that may have happened in the classroom and obviously I've I've changed and adapted to to be suitable for five six seven year olds um but hopefully using that actual experience and knowledge I've got around um yeah just around my job and, and industry experience I've I've got yeah that's a really good kind of different take on it as well from maybe like parents that are looking into books for their children knowing that it's coming from like that kind of experience in education they might feel like this could be a really good point for my children to get into these books yeah, yeah. and also you know from a from a, a mum point of view myself it's I want to always be able to have those conversations with my children and sometimes some of the books I read with them are just, you know, the books are so instrumental at that age of, of what they think about and what they want to do. And they pick up so much. So I think by including these kind of conditions for those books, it doesn't, you know, it's not meant to be a, a learning book. It's that you sit down in the evening, you pick a book for bedtime and we're, we're chatting about Dylan who's got dyslexia. And it's just a really natural, lovely story, but that's already starting to just get get the message in, into our children that we're all different and, and it's like embracing those those differences that we've got. Yeah, that right. So um, your vision for the future and, and your books, where do you see them kind of going forward in, in the like a wider society? So hopefully, I mean, I really, really believe that there is a gap in the market, as I said, and I think the concept is, is incredible. So my vision for the future is just to, um, get them bigger and bigger and, and get to a bigger platform. I mean, the dream would be to have a book for every condition. So, you know, not only are you really then trying to tap into some conditions that don't have any awareness around them or understanding, um, but it's also giving children characters that they feel they can relate to. You know, if just how lovely for a five-year-old to, to pick up a book and say, oh, that's like me, or I do that, or I struggle with that. And just suddenly that having something they feel that they're not the only person um, and then again, I mean, from a teaching point of view, I would love the idea that, that Dylan would one day be a, be a character and can go into a school and run a workshop um, on dyslexia and actually go in and, and chat to the children and, and then turn it into a learning experience where the children and the teachers and the parents are really learning about it and how it can be, how it can be done differently. So I'd love that avenue as well I mean my characters are all very, well I think very lovable animals and they're all you know quite um caring and and people love the sort of cartoony features about them so to get them as characters that you know children could then chat to and stuff I think would be really incredible I mean we're many many moons in the future but it would just be to to normalize it and for them to be in every school and on every bookshelf at home I just think would be 
is so important to to bring these conditions to the surface and and as I said just have them on your bookshelf next to you know the Gruffalo and and whatever else and it's just that they're just books and and people love reading them and, and sharing the characters yeah and that sounds a great vision for just for like we said before like just for everything to be out there and for people to be comfortable in who they are and going into schools and raising awareness of dyslexia and, and other SEN it's only a good thing isn't it raising yeah. awareness like that so that's yeah. not, you know I, I want a, a child to just put their hand up and say oh because I'm dyslexic please could I have the different colored paper that I use or or something not a, a hushed conversation or a phone call with an embarrassed parent that they're saying oh don't don't raise away you know don't bring him to, to attention and all like it's part of who they are like they shouldn't have to hide and as I said and so often especially with young children you can't and the more you try and hide things, the more children, you know, they don't have filters. So they are just going to say it. And, and, and rather than that being an issue, if it's just an open, you know, area that we just talk about and there, there is no issue and there's no stigma, then it's just you, you kind of remove that hushed conversations about it, which I've always really struggled with as a teacher. You know, I just think it's, you know, I mean, obviously, if the, the child wants it, it to, then that's fine as well. But I think not feeling that they have to is really important yeah does that make sense <laughs> definitely and then also with like knowing knowing that you might be struggling with that earlier on as well it also has an impact later on in life so by being able to put them provisions in place early then yeah going through school and everything I mean you're going to be doing a lot better with that extra help there going yeah. forward yeah, definitely. And then each book has got um, so ten percent um, goes to a, a charity specific of, of all sales um, that goes to to say dyslexia or to autism, um, to ADHD. So as a side, I'd love for for that to you know for them to actually do good and, and help these incredible charities to continue to to raise money and raise awareness and on a you know a scale I could never dream of. But if people reading these books could help that, then it would you know obviously be amazing. <laughs> That sounds brilliant. Yeah, they're a great message in them and they're great to encourage anyone to go out and, and delve in and start that conversation, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, chat with us today, Joe. It's been great to have a chat with you and we'll catch you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>